So now we're ready to apply materials to our shapes. We actually just created the last shapes that we need to make for the project. Now that all the shapes are completed, we're going to look at the material application. Now, when you're working on your own, you can actually go to the materials stage and apply material whenever you want to. Uh, for the fundamental training, we try not to jump around quite so much. Uh, so we decided we would do it all at one time. But just, just so you know, when you're working on your own, you can jump ahead to materials and apply materials as you go, if that's your preference. So materials are in stage 11. So we're going to go to the top of our panel menu, left click. We've worked through all these stages in the design phase. Now we're going to go down to the materials phase and click on materials, stage 11. You'll notice that we go directly into the 3D environment. We don't do anything in 2D. Everything is done in 3D. All we're doing here is selecting shapes or categories of shapes and applying new materials from our materials library. So there's really no need for us to go back into 2D. If you look up at your panel menu, you see it's quite different. There are no tools, just the move tool. Um, we have our quick selection, material manipulation. I'll go over that with you. Over on the left side of your screen, your library opened up to a pretty long list of uh, materials. You'll notice there are two different sections in your materials library. Um, the top section from brick down to wood, we've got the um, uh, generic, what I call generic materials. They're just materials that our artists have created for you. Then we have below that vendor materials. So these are uh, materials that uh, specific vendors, uh, manufacturers want us to have in the library so you can access them very quickly and easily. So you can choose from any of these for your projects. Down at the bottom, we have uh, subcategories called currently used, favorites, and history. I use currently used quite often to match items. I'll show you that in just a minute. And then favorites is something that you can do uh, as you're applying materials, you can mark your favorite materials. And what that does is that puts a copy of that material down here in your favorites. So if you continue to um, mark favorites, pretty soon you're going to have a nice little subcategory of all of your go-to materials. So that's a, that's a good idea. So I'll show you that here in just a second too, just kind of giving you an overview of the, the new, um, the new look here. So um, you can either double click on your shapes to select them and apply the materials from the library, or you can use your quick selection. That's pretty handy. Uh, if, you, if you have a group of shapes that you want all the same material on, you can use your quick selection. And the first example that I'm going to show you is going to be the house. That's the very first quick selection category that we have. So this is just selecting house shapes. I'm going to click on house. And when I bring my cursor over into my 3D environment, notice that the house highlights red. All the shapes that are house, other than the roof, highlight red. And that lets you know that you have the house shape selected. Then you would go over to your library and find the material category that you want. Let's say stucco is the material that we want. Next to the number of items, you can left click on the drop down arrow and you can choose coarse or Monterey, smooth, Spanish, whatever kind of stucco you want. Um, let's go with the smooth stucco. All right, I'm gonna put a check mark there. Now all of my smooth stucco options are available and I can double click on a uh, color that I like. And you can see as I double click that it updates the material on the selected shape. Okay, so you can put whatever material that you want on your house shape. Okay, I'm gonna put a light tan. All right, now a good habit to get into, I do this when I'm working on my own. I, when I'm finished with the material, I uncheck it and just try to remember to close that list up and that way I kind of keep everything intact. And um, if, if I have a lot of items checked and I have a lot of subcategories open, it gets really confusing. But if I have my library kind of put back together, it helps me find the categories that I'm looking for. Next uh, 
uh, category that we're going to work with over in our quick selection is going to be our hardscapes. Click on hardscapes. Let's say that we want all of our hardscapes to have the same surface. And, and, and let me clarify too that when we click on hardscape, we're just selecting the top of the hardscape. Okay. So uh, let's say that we want to apply a concrete material to our hardscapes. So I'm going to the concrete category, left clicking on the drop down arrow. So I don't have to look through all 63 if I know for sure that I want a stamped concrete or a textured concrete or brushed concrete, I can click on those and double click and apply that updated material. Let's see what that tan looks like or the brown. I'm double clicking, finding one that I like. Let me go with that cream color. All right, now every thumbnail has a star at the top right hand corner. And if you left click on that star, that will add a copy of this material to your favorites down at the bottom of the library. That's the gold star that you see. So click on the gray star, turn it into a gold star, and a copy of that material is going to go into your favorites, which probably a good idea because you will definitely have your go-to materials that you use pretty consistently. All right, next we are going to, well, I'll, I'll, uh, Go ahead and uncheck that and collapse it. Just like I said, I try to remember to do that just so I can I can see all my categories. Um, next thing we're going to do is go over to our quick selection and we're going to click on riser. I want to show you what the riser is and I'm going to rotate around to the front and show you with these steps here. So the riser is going to be the exposed sides of any of your hardscapes that are exposed above ground level. The sides of those would be the risers. You probably heard that term in your construction. Um, now I would choose whatever material I want. Um, I could go over to my stone category, might be a good choice here. Go to the stacked stone and double click on the material that I want to see. Kind of try some things out, see what they look like. Oh, I really like that ledge stone. Now that's going to affect the riser on any hardscape. So think of all the hardscapes that we made. Let me rotate around to the back again. That's going to put that material on the kitchen island. So you kind of have to keep that in mind. Um, I'm going to go ahead and deselect that to see what it looks like. The, the circle with the line through it at the top of the screen really comes in handy here so we can deselect our shape and really get an idea of what that material looks like. And while we're over here, I want to put a unique material on top of the island. I'm going to double click on that. It's not part of my quick selection. I, I want to select it independently. So I just double click on it and it selects that that surface. You can you can see you can literally put any material on any selected surface. And we've got lots of materials over here. For the um, countertop on that kitchen island, I'd probably go with a granite in my stone option. So I, I was already in my stone category. I'm going to go to the granite options and double click on uh, some, of, some of my choices here. Make a decision. That's the hard part. Have to decide. Okay, I, I'm going to choose that one and uncheck and close my stone category. Got a couple more I want to show you. Um, let's focus on the pool next. Go over here to the pool category. And I am going to choose a coping for my pool. Now, over in my quick selection, I have a category for coping. I'm going to click on coping. Then I'm going to go over to my library. Now, coping can be in several different categories. So if you wanted to see all of the materials that are, you know, uh, cataloged as coping, you could do a search for the word coping and that will pull up all of those materials. That'll give you a really broad overview of what all we have in the library that you could apply as coping. So you might go up to the top of your library and left click in the search tab and type in coping. Do a quick search on coping. There's brick coping, there's stone coping, 
tile coping, lots of different coping options. Even down here, Artistic Pavers has some coping options for us. So uh, we'll, we'll get options pulled from manufacturers as well when we do our searches, depending on the um, depending on the search that we use. Let me double click and show you what that's going to look like with some of these options. All right, so I've made a decision and I know that I want that uh, coping on the pool. It applied to the top of my retaining wall as well. Now, if I zoom out, I notice that the other part of the retaining wall has a different material on it. I'm going to double click on that and I'm going to apply that same material to that surface. Okay, and that's going to keep that matching and looking like what it's supposed to look like. All right, now I've got the right material on. I'll deselect that. Everything's kind of coming together now. Um, now with the ramp here, I want the same material on the ramp that I have on the wood deck. That would be a good time to use my currently used. So I'm going to go down to my bottom of my library. I'm going to click on currently used, and that's going to pull up the list of all of the materials that I've currently applied. Even some of the ones that applied automatically, like the wood finish on the wood deck. So I'm looking and I have a couple of different options here. I think it's a chestnut. I'm going to double click on the ramp and I'm going to double click. And sure enough, that matches. That's a great way to match. Just one way to match your shapes. All right, let's see, anything else I want to address? I might do the pool interior. Um, that's gonna be in my quick selection. I've got the interior button there. That's all things inside the pool. And you can, you can see as I move my cursor over the pool, everything, steps, benches, pool interior finish is, uh, is going to be highlighted. Now I need to get back to my main materials library. When I clicked on currently used, it pulled that currently used list up. I need to get back to my main material library. So I'll click on materials. Then I'll go down to pool interiors. There's a lot of them, but I want to kind of browse through and see what my options are. I can double click and see those materials applied as I go. Right, so I've made up my mind. I know what material I want to apply and I can deselect that and look at it. Looks great. I think I'm really happy with my materials. If you ever need to make any modification to your materials, you've got options over in your panel menu. If I have a, uh, if I have a surface selected or a shape selected, I can go over to my material manipulation. I can change the scale of the material. I can rotate the material so it's in a different orientation. I can change the color of the material. Now we're ready to move on to plants and trees. We're gonna work with our landscaping part of the software. Um, just go up to the top of your panel menu and left click on the next stage button and that will take us to stage 12, plants and trees. Now I'm gonna go into 2D to insert my plants and trees. Technically, you can insert them in 3D, just my personal preference, um, you know, just ease for placement and aligning and spacing, selecting. I, I like the 2D environment. I prefer that. One of the things that I do when I make the transitions from working in the design stage into the um, plants and trees and accessories where basically I'm just inserting shapes, inserting plants, inserting accessories from the library. I always pay a lot of attention to my object settings. I want to make sure that my auto elevation is on. Auto elevation is going to ensure that those plants and trees are going to go down on the ground. Okay, so that's their defaulted elevation. They should go down on the ground. That makes sense, right? Um, <clears throat> so auto elevation is on. And then directly below that, you do have this ability to define your plants and trees 
um, with a certain container class. You can assign a container class before you insert whatever plant or tree it is. And then that information will automatically be populated on your plant legend when you go into the construction stage. So this might be helpful. I'm just going to, going to leave mine at full size today. But um, when, when it's a working project for you all and you're landscaping and that's part of what you do, that might really come in handy. Okay. Um, so uh, the plan is here, I'm going to uh, insert some Monterey cypress trees along the back of this planter. That's my plan. That's the first thing I'm going to insert. So I'm going to go over to my library and I've got my tree category. Rather than look through all 400 plus uh, trees that are there, I'm going to left click on the little white arrow and expose my subcategory list so I can really itemize, you know, or, or you know, minimize the list that I have to go through. And these are evergreen. The Monterey Cypress are evergreen. So I'm going to click on evergreen. And now I'll just be looking through my evergreen. There's quite a few of those too. And they are... Um, in alphabetical order. So starting from the top and kind of scrolling down, I can I can find that Monterey Cypress. Now, there is a search option up in the top of the library. You can left click and type in Monterey Cypress, and that would be another way to, um, to, to find that really quickly and easily. But I just want to show you if you're just browsing through, this might be another way. So I browse through, I go down to Monterey Cypress, um, you know, every one of these thumbnails has a gray star in the top right-hand corner. I've given the Monterey Cypress a gold star. I left-click on the gray star, and it becomes a gold star. And what that means is that tree um, template is now saved into my favorites. So if you do that consistently, it's going to be really handy. It's going to be a little bit more efficient for you to be able to go to a little, like a subcategory list of all of your go-to plants and trees, that's going to be something that will save you some time. So as you're working, you know, just click on that little gray star. All right. So just to review how we insert multiples of an item, you left click on your thumbnail picture to select, then go down to the bottom of the library and there's insert one or insert multiple. We're going to click on insert multiple and I'm going to drop in six Monterey Cypress, and I'm not really working too hard to space or align those because I've got a tool that's going to do that for me. And by the way, when you have the insert multiple engaged, you right click to stop inserting. So that's something um, you have to remember too. I just click as many times as I want to insert whatever it is that I have selected, and then I right click to stop. All right. Now, I've got some spacing and aligning tools that I want to show you, but before we space and align, we've got to select all of these Monterey Cypress. And a fast, easy way to do that is to just left click on one of them and then right click on the shape and you'll get your, your right click menu will reflect settings for the selected shape. What do you want to do? I want to select matching. That's down at the bottom right hand corner. I'm going to click on matching. Then I'm going to go over to my uh, aligning and spacing tools. That's down at the very bottom of your panel menu. It's the last um, tab down there. So there's a lot of options. You can align to the left, center, right, um, top, middle, bottom. I'm just going to align to the bottom. And what that means is that you'll see them all shift and align to the lowest um, shape, okay? Then to the right of that, you have distribute. So it's kind of like spacing them evenly. And so it'll do it automatically for you. You just go up and you click on horizontal, space those horizontal. I'm going to move them over just to the right just a little bit. And you know what? I have a I have a tool for moving that's not my move tool. If you have something selected, you can actually move your shapes or shape using the arrow keys on your keyboard. I'm going to move that over using my arrow keys. And that's just going to slide that over and center it just a little bit better. All right, let's take a look at those in 3D.
Looks good. They look spaced. I'm just going to look around on the back and make sure I don't have them too close to the wall. They look great. All right, I'm going to go back into 2D and I'm going to add some shrubs. You can add whatever shrub you want. So if you want to browse through and find a shrub that you like or any plant or tree that you want to insert is fine. Um, I'll just go through the same process. I'll find the plant tree, insert multiple matching space and align if if you want, you know, just kind of depends on, on what your personal preference is. Um, I'm going to go down to my favorites. You guys can browse through the library. I have mine saved into my favorites. I'm going to insert the purple fountain grass. That's in the ornamental grass category um, under ground covers. I'm going to left click on ornamental grass, insert multiple. Just dropping those in, then right click when I'm finished. Select matching with my right click menu. And I can just space and align those just to make it a little bit easier than having to, you know, move things around in 3D with the gizmo. I'll take a look at those. They look great. I'm going to put some smaller ground covers in next, and I'm going to show you um, one additional aligning tool that comes in handy when you have uh, shapes that you're placing on a slope. Okay, so we'll go back into 2D. I'm going to use the, um, also in the ground covers category, the um, Asian Jasmine. It's a flat sort of patch of ground cover. And so because of the nature of the shape it requires a little different manipulation, um, make a little bit more sense when I can show you in 3D. So I'm going to go ahead and do my insert multiple. Drop in quite a few of those, and I'm I'm not going to space and align these. I'm I'm just going to kind of drop them in, uh, sort of randomly placed, to make them look a little bit more natural. Right click to get rid of that last one. Now I do want to select matching though. Let me let me select matching here and show you another tool for aligning. Um, I'm going to right click. There's my matching button. So now all of my Asian Jasmine uh, ground covers are selected. I'm going to go over into the 3D environment. So you see, because of the nature of this plant being flat and like a more of a patch of grass or ground cover here, um, I need to align these to the slope of the terrain. And I have a tool for that. That's also in your aligning section. Go down to alignment and there's a button that says to slope. Now when I click on that, all of those are going to kind of rotate and adjust to the slope. Whatever slope it is, this, these align to this slope and they look a lot better. Knowing that, um, knowing that tool in that setting is going to be really helpful when you're working on uh, uneven terrain. All right, I think everything looks great. We learned some helpful uh, tools. Aligning, select matching was really helpful. Let's go back into 2D. I'm going to go ahead and close my library up. And we're all finished with plants and trees. We are going to move on to the next stage. That will take us to stage 13. And that's where we're going to work with our yard accessories. So we'll go to the top of the panel menu and left click on the next stage button. That's going to take us to stage 13, yard accessories. And yard accessories is where we add um, items to our project, uh, furniture, lighting, um, equipment. There's some things that are really practical in this list in the library. And there are some things that are more staging, you know, um, and you can kind of take it to whatever level you want to as far as how many things you insert. But I would say minimally, you want to add furniture, lighting. Um, <clears throat> I would say furniture helps people understand the scale of the space, um, kind of helps them see themselves kind of hanging out in that space. So that's very helpful. Um, and then of course, like I said, there are staging items, there's characters, people. So best, best thing to do would be to um, 
when you have time, look through this library, see what's here, see how it's organized, do some searches if you need to at the top. You can always search for things. Um, I thought that we would start off by uh, inserting some furniture, and I'll show you some tools that come with the, the templates. But before we start inserting anything, look over at your panel menu, and this is a good habit to get into. Um, look at your object settings. Make sure that your auto elevation is on. Make sure that that's on. That ensures that things are going to go where the system thinks that they need to go to. And it does a it does a good job most of the time. It it, it really does. Um, occasionally, I'll need to move things up or down with my gizmo. Um, we'll see some examples of that here in just a minute. Um, but the furniture is programmed to go down on, on the ground level, where it kind of goes down to wherever you place it. So furniture is in the um, library. Under the furniture category, I want you to look, there's 400 different types of furniture. So if you left click on the drop down arrow, that will kind of help you itemize what it is that you're looking for. I know that there's a wicker seating set. So there's uh, some wicker furniture that's already kind of put together in configurations for you, makes it a little bit faster. So we'll go down to the wicker seating set, click on the box next to that category or subcategory and then we'll look for a sitting set that's going to fit into the space where our fire feature is. So that's the covered patio area. I found a seating set with tables. I'm going to go with that one. I'm going to left click on it then go down and click on insert. Bring it over, left click and drop it in and when you're working with templates uh, from the library like this. A lot of times there are multiple shapes that are grouped together. That's the box around the selected shapes. So you can expect for them to all behave as one. They'll rotate all together. They'll move all together. And uh, I think I do need to rotate this. I see the couch is sort of has its back to the pool and we definitely want that orientation to be different. So at the top of any of your templates that are grouped like this, you're going to see a little hook icon and that is the rotate tool. You don't have to go over and activate the rotate tool. You kind of have one already built in. Left click on that and rotate that around. Just left click and drag it around and it will rotate. Okay now my auto elevation is on so I'm pretty sure that that went to where it's supposed to go elevation wise but let's go into 3D and just kind of check it out. There's my furniture. If I need to move it in 3D, I double click on it and use the gizmo to adjust the position. All right, so the furniture is in place. Next thing that I want to work with is to create the sink. So over in, we, or insert the sink, I should say. We have a sink. We want to insert the sink over under the pergola. And I'll go ahead and go back into 2D and kind of get set up for that. Going back into 2D, I am going to uncheck my wicker set. That's a great habit to get into. When, when you've got a really long list of items like this, I call it clear and close your library. Uncheck and close that list. That gets your library all back intact. So when you're finished working with a category, uncheck it. Just a, you know, not a rule, just a suggestion. Um, now I'm going to do a search for the sink. So at the top of this library, there's a search option. Left click and then type in sink. Click on the little magnifying glass icon and here are the sinks that you can insert. There are three right here up at the top and we want the small one. But you know what? I look over at my plan view, my 2D view, and my purple is kind of in the way. I have two options. I can hide my pergola altogether or I can change the settings on how my pergola is being displayed. So you just left click on your pergola to select it and then go up to the top of your plan view, up to the top of your grid. In the application bar, I want you to click on your hide and unhide. And then I want you to go down to your house tab. That's house has um, the pergola settings as well. And there is the pergola. If I wanted to hide it, I could hide the pergola. But what I'll do is I'll change the way that it's being displayed so that I can see the kitchen island and the sink area. So if I choose solid, 
I no longer have those top rafters and beams and all of those lines there that were making it hard for me to see what I needed to see. So that's an option that you can um, choose. Left click away from that. Now I'm going to zoom in to the kitchen island. And I'm going to set the sink right on top. So I um, left click on the sink in the library, the smaller sink. Now go down to the insert selected item one time, click on that, bring your sink over and drop that in. Now I'm going to zoom in really closely, take advantage of my rotating tool because, well, it's in the wrong orientation. This, the uh, faucet's on the wrong side. So I go up to my rotating icon. As soon as my cursor turns into that little circle, I hold down my left mouse button and rotate this around. I might be able to center that a little bit better. I can zoom in and move it. Looks like it's moving pretty easily. Get it to fit inside that opening that I made. And then I'll set the elevation. I'm going to go over to my panel menu. In my object settings, I'm going to need to turn auto elevation off. Auto elevation doesn't know where this thing's supposed to go, so I have to manually set it to the correct elevation. So when I want control of the elevation, I turn auto elevation off, set the elevation to three feet, zero inches. Okay, I'm not rotated quite enough. One more, one more um, rotation. There we go. Now I think, let me zoom out and see if that looks good. Yeah, I think that looks great. Let me go ahead and look at that in 3D. little navigating, work my way under here. Looks fantastic. All right, I'm gonna go back into 2D. And the next thing I'm gonna look for are pool lights. So back over in my library area, my library, my overall library, because I did a search, my overall library kind of collapsed down to this list down at the bottom. So I'm going to go down and click on items that will pull all of my main library items back up. And I have my full list available looking for lighting, pool lights in, in particular. So I'm going to go to the light category, left click on the drop down arrow. Again, this is a pretty long category. So I'm going to go down um, and, and find my pool and spa lights. I'm going to go ahead and click on that pool and spa lights. All right. So one thing that I want you to know about pool and spa lights is that um, they are programmed to snap on to the shapes of pools. So that makes it really handy. Not all, not all shapes are, are um, programmed like that, but we wanted to make the, you know, putting pool and spa lights in really quick and easy. We know that's a standard. That's what, what you're going to do consistently all the time. So I'm going to zoom into the pool here and I will attach a white pool light. Let me select that found my white pool light, I left click on it, then go down and I'm going to insert two. So we'll go with the option that says insert selected item multiple times. Click on that, bring my little uh, shape over. It's very small, but again, remember it's programmed to snap on to the pool. I'm going to snap one on to the left side of the pool, right where that spillover is. It sort of just, it, it, uh, it snaps on, it conforms, it, it, it configures to the pool shape really fast and easy. I do the same thing over on the right hand side and left click and drop that. And I'm just kind of eyeballing. Um, if you're working on your own and you want to measure exactly where that's going, you can use the measure tool. Remember when you use the insert multiple, whenever you want to stop inserting, you right click. So I inserted two, then I right click, um, now I'm, I'm noticing over there, my auto elevation was not on, you know what? That's a good habit to get into. So let me left click on this, uh, light and turn my auto elevation on. See, this is kind of like, oops, I, I caught myself, uh, missing that auto elevation, but auto elevation does a great job 
of putting things where they're supposed to go. And it's easy to forget. It really is. But if you forget, you can always select the item, turn auto elevation on, and it will auto elevate that item. So we'll go into 3D, see if that worked for me. See if I can get to this from, from the homeowner's uh, vantage point. There we go. Let's see what these pool lights look like in the dark. So the, if you're in 3D and you want to go to nighttime, you can press the letter N on your keyboard and that will take you to dusk. Then you press the letter N again and it takes you to nighttime. The letter N is a basically a hotkey that will toggle you through day, dusk, and night, and it just kind of rotates through those three different um, times of day, okay? So if I wanted to go back to day, I just press N again, now I'm back to day. But that's a great way to check your lighting to make sure that your lights are in the right spot. Let's see this one over here, I'll go to nighttime again, N, takes me to dusk and then N again takes me to nighttime. I think my lights look really good. Next, I'm gonna add some water features on this raised wall over here. So I'm gonna go back into 2D, uncheck my pool and spa lights and collapse the lighting category. Obviously, I would put a lot more lights in in a working project. Um, you really wanna light that space up. When you go to nighttime, and all the pretty twinkly lights come on. People just love that. That's a real wow factor. Um, it's very appealing. So take the time to explore that light category. Look for the lighting. There's, there's house lights, there's garden lights, there's staging lights, there's pool and spa lights, etc. cetera. So a so lot of lighting, a lot of lighting that you can work with. But I want to show you the water feature because I think we have a great opportunity to add some water features to this raised wall here. And uh, those are going to be in the category called water elements. Okay, so water elements. And I'm just going to left click on the drop down arrow next to the number of water elements because we've got quite a few. And I know that specifically what I want are the scuppers. Now there's 25 different scuppers. So let me, again, expose a subcategory list to see what kind of scuppers and what are the sizes. Okay, I want a 16 uh, inch sheet flow, okay? So I'm finding my 16 inch stainless steel or copper sheet flow. You have two different finishes you can choose from. I'm gonna go with the stainless steel today. So I'll left click right on that and then left click on the thumbnail to select it. Now I'm gonna do this one a little bit differently than I did the um, lighting, uh, pool lights, because these are not programmed in the same way that the pool lights are. They're not programmed to snap on to the wall. So I'll need to do some, possibly some, some rotating and, and moving up or down. Auto elevation doesn't always know exactly where the scupper is supposed to go. So uh, we'll fix that. We will take care of that. So I'm going to go over to my sheet flow, select it, go down and click on insert one. I'm just going to put one in for now. And I'm going to that wall and dropping that scupper in. The arrow indicates the direction of the water flow. So currently that would be an in inappropriate, right? That wouldn't be the correct, correct direction of the water flow. So we'll use the rotating tool, getting some good practice with this rotating tool. Rotate that around. Now I'm going to set the elevation of this specifically to what I think it should be. Okay. Let me just adjust the position, go over to my object settings, turn off auto elevation and set the elevation to one foot, six inches. That'll be one foot, six inches above ground level. And I'll look at it in 3D. Good good idea. This is what I do um, when I'm working with items that are small or accessories. Um, a lot of times I'll leave them selected in 2D and go into 3D. Let me check it out. Make sure I like the position of that. Okay, so that looks good. If I want 
th um, two more of those, three in total, I'm going to go back into 2D and rather than insert another one, rotate it, adjust the elevation on each one, I'm going to copy and paste this one and that'll be a little bit faster. So I'm going to go back into 2D. With my original scupper selected, I'm going to press Control C for copy and then Control V as in Victor. And I'm just going to drop that in. And Control V as in Victor, drop that in. I'm going to space and align these. So I'm going to select one. And um, you can, you can I, I think if I right click on that, um, I can select matching. That's a fast way to select matching. We learned that in uh, plants and trees. So if you have something selected and you right click, you'll get the right click menu for your matching um, tool. Now I'm going to go down to my aligning. I'm going to align to the bottom and then I'm going to distribute horizontally. Let me take a look at those in 3D, see if I like the position of those. Whoops, zooming into my house sometimes. Okay, let me go back to daytime, dusk, night, daytime. I'm pressing the letter N on my keyboard to change the, uh, just to change the look, just to see what they look like in, in different lighting. They look great. Also, I have my sounds hidden. Normally, um, when I when I don't have my sounds hidden, as I zoom in really closely to any of my water features, I'm going to hear those water features. So the spillover on my spa, the scuppers, the water flow, we, we have sound for those. But I have my sound hidden in my hide and unhide. I'll show you where that is. Um, so when you're working, if you want to hide your sounds, you can go down to the very bottom of your hide and unhide. And in your preview mode, there's an option to turn your play sounds off. So you turn your play sounds off and that way when you're working, you won't hear a lot of splashing when you're in 3D. And especially for me from, for, for training, I want everyone to be able to hear me and I don't need the distraction. Or maybe if you're just working on your own and you just don't want to hear the splashing when you zoom in, um, you, you can certainly hide that. All right, let's go back into 2D. And the next thing that I um, want to do is to take some pictures. I want to take some pictures of my project. And that is the next thing that we're going to do. I'm going to go ahead and close my library up. So now we're going to move on to the next stage. Go to the top of your panel menu and left click on the next stage button. And that's going to take us to stage 14, create presentation. Um, you can, if you look in the panel menu, right at the very top, you can be in photo mode, video mode, or presentation mode. We're going to look at two out of three of those options. Photo mode is the one we're going to start with. So we're going to left click on photo mode. Okay, when you go into photo mode, you're in the 3D environment at the top of your screen, zooming and panning and rotating to navigate like you normally would. Down in the bottom of the screen, there is a section that we call the storyboard section. You can create camera locations. And that's one of the things that we're going to talk about. We have the ability to create camera locations and link a key on the keyboard to those camera locations so that when we want to quickly navigate to that precise camera location, we can just uh, click on the buttons that were assigned. And it's basically based on the order of the number that you create your camera locations. I'll show you how that works. Let's say that we want to be um, in photo mode. We already clicked on photo mode. Okay, so we're in photo mode. Now we'll navigate to a location that looks like a good picture, picture or a good starting location, maybe the end of the pool, looking at the pool from this angle. Now, if I wanted to establish a camera location, I would go down to the storyboard and I would click on the button down at the bottom left-hand corner. See where it says new camera location. Go ahead and click on new camera location. 
Okay, that's camera location number one. They're numbered as we um, as we choose the camera locations. They're numbered, and that is the number on your keyboard that will automatically put you in the same position, the same camera angle uh, moving forward. So that's a great way to kind of quickly define where your go-to camera spots are going to be, your camera locations. All right, now I'm going to position myself so I'm looking at the kitchen island. Find, find a good camera location, kind of navigating my way around. Okay, so there is the kitchen island. And so I'm going to go down and click on new camera location. That's camera location number two. All right, now I'm going to kind of zoom in on this door. And you might think, why are we focusing on a door? I'll explain that here in just a minute. I am going to position so that I'm looking at this door and um, kind of get just in the right spot. There we go. Just like I'm walking into the door, I'm going to create a camera location. So clicking on new camera location every time. All right, I'll explain that when we get into presentation mode. All right, now. When we want to take photos, we go to our camera locations and we press the letter P on our keyboard. Think of P for picture or P for photo. And um, that's a great way to remember what that shortcut is. But what I can do to take me to my camera location is press one on my keyboard and that will take me to my first camera location. See how quickly and easily it is to go to each one of those uh, assigned camera locations. Now I'll press the letter P for picture and I've got a little uh, icon down at the bottom right hand corner that says picture taken. It popped up. There's a little small thumbnail view of the picture that was taken. All right, now I will go to camera location number two. Press two on my keyboard. That takes me around to my second camera location and I'm going to press the letter P for picture and my photo is saved. Okay, I can also go back to camera location number one, pressing one on my keyboard. See how fast and easy if I were kind of zooming and panning, it might take me just a little bit longer. So now I'm going to press the letter N and that's going to take me to desk or press the letter N again, nighttime, P for picture. Now I've got a picture of the pool at nighttime. Go back to daytime by pressing the letter N. So you've got all these options for how you want your picture to look. Um, you have set ways that you can establish your camera locations fast, easy ways to navigate to certain places. Now, the other way that I want to show you to take um, photos is being in presentation mode. Presentation mode is a little bit different. You are completely, totally immersed in your 3D environment. You will have no interface on your screen and it will just be you and your project and you're walking through that project as if you and your client were basically taking a virtual tour of that property. So, uh, to go into presentation mode, it's a slightly different mode. You go up to the top of the panel menu right there next to photo mode and video mode. Click on presentation. All right. See how my screen changed? I'm still where I want to be, but I don't have any interface. And the way I navigate is in walk mode. By default, I'm in a mode called walk mode. And if I left click, I walk forward. And if I move my mouse, I'm moving the camera, kind of what, you know, kind of looking at it like what's, what am I looking at? What's my perspective? So I just move my cursor around if I want to uh, see what the other uh, parts of the project look like. I can left click to move forward, right click to move backward. Walk mode is what I'm in right now. All right. Now, if I wanted to, again, press the letter N, that would take me to desk. I could take a picture here, same way I took a picture in photo mode. Just press the letter P for picture, picture taken. Go to nighttime, press the letter P, picture taken. 
Okay, I'll go back to daytime and I'll go over to the um, kitchen. Pressing two on my keyboard tells the system that I wanna go to this camera location. All right, now I'll press three. Remember this one was the one that I told you I'd kind of explain. If I wanted to, I can always go into the house, turn myself around and show my client what the view is going to look like from these windows or from their, uh, from their sliding glass door or whatever view that they have because the view is going to change significantly. Okay, so a fast, easy way to navigate is to set up these camera locations. And then you can just press the button so that you can go where you want to go. Now I'm back outside and I've taken quite a few pictures. I um, Let's see, I'm going to come over here, take one more picture at desk. Remember, you press the letter N and that toggles you through day, dusk, or night. Really pretty picture there. Press the letter P for picture. All right, now how do we get out of this presentation mode? Um, you can press the letter X on your keyboard to get out of presentation mode. You can also press the escape button on your keyboard. And when you press the escape button on your keyboard, there's a menu that's gonna pop up and it will tell you what all of your options are. P for picture, um, the space bar will put you in auto tour, reset, fly, walk mode, time of day shortcuts, or exit presentation. If I want to get back into my presentation mode, I press escape again. So escape pulls up just a little quick list of everything that you can do, the shortcut keys that activate those uh, modes or those functions. And um, that's pretty much what you do in, in presentation mode, a virtual presentation that has no interface. It just immerses you in. It's a, it's a great platform to do a live presentation for your client. Okay. Um, so to, uh, I'll show you one more mode and that's fly mode. I'm going to press the letter F for fly before we exit. We want to see how we fly. Flying navigates in a way that you really don't have any restrictions. Walk mode kind of restricts you to being at an eye level perspective but fly mode allows you to go anywhere. So I can actually use my, I like to use my right click menu and fly up backwards. Right clicking takes you backwards, but it's a fast, easy way to do an aerial view. And I could do that from day or dusk or night. I'll go ahead and press N on my keyboard and go to daytime. So if I wanted to take a screenshot of my aerial view, I could do that. I would just press the letter P for picture once I get centered. Sometimes I have to fly across a little bit. Left clicking flies me forward, right clicking flies me backwards. That looks like a really great central location for my overhead shot. So I'm going to press P for picture. All right, now remember X is how we exit out of presentation mode. So I'm going to go ahead and press X on my keyboard. So now we're back in stage 14, create presentation. And the last thing that we have to do is to look at our screenshots. Where do we access those screenshots? You access those screenshots through your media viewer. It's a separate screen. To access that screen, go to the top left hand corner and right next to your file name, you're going to see a little icon that looks like a little picture of pictures. It says open media viewer. When you click on that, you're going to see the screenshots that you took. You can double click and open those screenshots. Okay, now you can save those, you can share them. Um, there is a convenient way to send your screenshots via an email. If you have a screenshot or more, you can select as many as you like. Selected, you can go over to your um, top right hand corner of your screen where your panel menu would normally be. And uh, there's an orange uh, button there with with a little envelope, it uh, is the icon for emailing. When you click on that, you're going to get your send email window from you to someone at somewhere.com. Type in your message. Thanks for letting me design your, your, your pool here, some screenshots for you to enjoy. So um, send those via that little window. 
And that's a fast, easy way to share those screenshots with your client. Now to get back to your project, go up to the top left-hand corner and click on the title bar. And that takes you back to uh, wherever you were. In our case, we were in stage 14. So we're going back to stage 14. When you're working on your own, guys, if you have any questions, if it's during the day, Monday through Friday, call our support team. Um, you can also email support at structurestudios.com. Just reach out. Let us know if there's anything that we can do to help you. But that does end uh, our fundamental training. We completed the project. We did everything that we needed to do. Great job. Thank you for joining me. And I'll go ahead and sign off. And thank you all very much for joining me. Bye, everybody.